Welcome back, everyone. Star Ladder Season 11 Europe. It continues now with Virtus Pro Polar going up against the Vega Squadron. And already we've got some picks. Polar are going to be going with their Wisp Salark. They've banned out Venge, Elder Titan, and the Legion Commander. And with those bans, I really feel like they're going to pick Batrider. But we'll just wait and see. Uh, Vega Squadron will go with a Viper and a Witch Doctor, so going to look to get up that dedicated mech. Witch Doctor with some heals, maybe transition that into some push. They've banned out the Brew. They've banned out the Puck as well. And also the Tide, and I realize my game volume is not on right now, so let's turn that back on. All right. Fixed. Also going to be taking out that Drow Ranger. Uh, it was the Tide Hunter that gets banned by the Vega Squadron, so that's uh, trying to limit the offline potential here Ten of Virtus Pro Polar. And uh, I was just bringing Five up the teams remaining. here to see kind of what they're what they're thinking about in 6.83 if they're utilizing any of the newer Reserve heroes. Uh, but so far, Polar with a lot of games under the belt. Obviously, they had that Dota Pit uh, matchup against Evil Geniuses where they did play a lot of Wisp Slark. So this is something that they like to do, Wisp Slark Tide. So with that Tide ban, I think uh, we can see that Vega Squadron has been paying attention uh, to Polar. What else did they work along with that? Uh, they put into the Brewmaster quite a few times. Brewmaster was the first ban out by Vega Squadron, so they have definitely done their research on Polar. They watch those games. And you know what I have not done my research on? Bloodseeker. I don't even think I saw the hero in 6.82. I have absolutely no clue what it does. Uh, so we're going to be reading some skills when we get into this game. Um, Bloodseeker. Ten seconds remaining. Blood Rite, that new uh, ability baptizing the area in sacred Five blood. After three remaining. seconds, the ritual completes, causing any enemies caught in the area to take damage and become silenced. Reserve time. Thirst is the same. Blood Rage has changed, right? Will be healed for 25% of the max health for any units they kill. So it basically gives them thirst. But it works the other way around. If they are killed, then it's 25% to the killer. So it's kind of a high-risk spell to use. Rupture is definitely way better. Duration of 12 seconds. Obviously, it was made pure damage a long time ago. Uh, I think, did the cast range even go up on it? It's not like 1,000. So Blood Rite is sort of just that, that new ability. It's not, nothing crazy. I mean, it's all over the ground. Obviously, I've seen the hero. I just don't quite know how it works or reacts. Uh, with team other heroes. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Seems like Witch Doctor's Paralyzing Cask, Death Ward, and Blood Rite would be a pretty good combination, so maybe that's the idea. Uh, where they lane it? Do they take it safe lane? Do they put it mid? Uh, do they put it mid, take Viper aggro, or go aggro, put Bloodseeker safe lane? We'll just have to wait and see. Vega Squadron will ban out the Night Stalker, and uh, Virtus Pro Polder, the Tidehunter's gone, so they'll go for that Centaur War Runner. They've also lost their Brew Master that they remaining. like. Uh, looking at a possible substitution along with this Wisp Five Slark, we've seen them remaining. put Undying, Venomancer, Ogre Mazai, Visage, and Lena uh, all along with those heroes. Reserve time. And uh, most of them, if not all of them, are left. But it's up to Vega Squadron right now. They're going for the fourth pick. Going to need another support. And maybe Bloodseeker can offlane too, but I'd say support and an offlane. Maybe one of those being ranged. Also, I haven't noticed anyone playing um, Queen of Pain yet. I've cast, I mean, what? I started casting 6.83 yesterday. We had four games, and today, well, three games. Uh, Should have had four. Today, we're going to have four games. Uh, Virus Pro Polar going to be in every single one of them from here on out. So I have a feeling we're going to be seeing a lot of Wisp Slark. Probably some Centaur, some Tide, maybe some Brewmaster coming out from then. Looking at the Vega Squadron... Uh, their game so far in 6.83, how many have they played? They have played seven. Uh, they've been opting for the Legion Commander. They've been picking a lot of Drow. They've been picking a lot of Visage. So both of these teams coming into this with uh, some decent understanding of one another. So the Viper Witch Doctor Bloodseeker definitely stands out here. It's the first time they've decided to go for the Bloodseeker in the new patch. Probably Ten if ever. Remaining. 
They've messed around with the new Wind Ranger as she has received some buffs. Troll as well, receiving a buff and implicitly, I guess... Oh, nice. As soon as I mentioned Queen of Pain, haven't seen it. Here it comes out. Uh, obviously, the new pure damage on the Sonic Wave. Uh, so you look at this, you're like, oh my god, the damage got reduced. 290, 390, and 490? Like, that spell sucks. But they made it pure damage, so now there's no magic mitigation. It's actually more damage than it was before. And I think someone... Uh, I saw a post yesterday, it was like, oh, new Queen of Pain tips. So the mana remaining. that you have to use to throw out your combo, so I guess that's 250, 110, 60, and 110. Whatever that adds up to is about how much damage you do um, at every level. So it's kind of just a good Queen of Pain tip. Make sure you've got enough mana in your mana pool before you're going to go in and try to blow somebody up. Uh, Zeus will be taken out. Night Stalker was also banned out. We have uh, we actually didn't see that hero have any success yesterday, but I know Secret has had success with the hero as for playing it mid. Um, I don't know. It's still a really weird role. It seems like it, it's still Night Stalker. If you get him ahead a in a game, he can easily clean up supports. Like, he would murder Wisp and Skywrath. There's no question. Uh, and then the only other really thing I think he brings to a team is he either snowballs out of control and then it doesn't matter, right? Like, I feel like any hero can just snowball out of control and then you're like, that was a good pick, it worked. Uh, but he really just brings vision control. With the changes to vision, now it can be any value instead of uh, a certain set of remaining. values, uh, which is, is pretty cool. So the darkness ultimate Five now pretty remaining. strong. You use it in the daytime, so most of the game is going to be in the dark. That limits your... Potential of smoke ganks even. We saw that happen yesterday. Smoking in nighttime is generally frowned upon. Smoking in darkness is extremely frowned upon. Your smoke breaks, you're like, well, I can't see anything. Hope the whole team isn't around this tree. Uh, but I don't know. I don't know if just that vision element is, is enough to warrant picking the hero even with his buffs. But here we go. Venomancer comes out from Polar. I think there's a hero we could have expected uh, looking at their previous drafts. It was one that I brought up. So Phobos will grab the Venomancer. Skywrath Mage is Skywrath Mage. I mean, whatever. You need a support. He's available. You're kind of going to pick him no matter what. And Venomancer is going to be by DK Phobos. I believe is the uh, mid laner. Yes, let's go with mid lane because Centaur is probably going to go off lane. Uh, so Phobos will be playing that core Venomancer. Either against ours, Zek on the Bloodseeker, or perhaps no one's Queen of Pain, but we've got uh, Nine Pasha Bashu playing the Clockwork, and Clockwork receiving a pretty decent buff to the, uh, the battery assault Ten damage. Seconds remaining. So, like, if it didn't already do a thousand by itself, now it does Five even more. Remaining. So his kill potential goes up, especially against heroes like Skyrath Mage, like, well, maybe not Wisp, because I think Wisp can tether out, but, uh, if someone's far enough away. But really... I forgot where I was going with this. Oh, yes, Clockwork. Yeah, the damage went up, I think... Like five at every level, I think it was 15, 35, 55, 75, and now they added five more damage at each level. So like 80 damage in a 0.7 second interval for 10 and a half seconds, that's, that's a lot. That's a lot of damage. Have a brief pause here as we wait. What was, what was their last hero? Witch Doctor, right? Yeah, so waiting for that support player to join in. Uh, and obviously that uh, announcement came out that Mag and FNG, looks like Mag hasn't had the chance to update his official uh, data in inside the Dota 2 client, but officially on the roster now, FNG and Mag. VP Polar has turned out to be quite a team. Like Illidan, Phobos, Little, Mag, and FNG. These guys are a force to be reckoned with, and I think they're going to give uh, Secret a run for their money here in that match coming up uh, later on in Star Ladder of course is what we're watching uh, I did a little bit of research into uh, these teams and uh, how they had stacked up against each other previously uh, so the only thing they played in was December 4th so that means it was 6.82 C it was the battle of the Central Europe 3 and it was a VP polar that's I guess it was either a best of three it must have been a best of three upper bracket semifinals and VP Polar took it 2-0 so that wasn't much of a problem for them they were about 42 minutes and 48 minutes in game time uh, so I guess VP Polar are gonna look to replicate their success here today in Star Ladder 
And it's going to be Illidan Storm Rage for VP Polar. He's going to be upstairs in that safeling along with the Wisp. So he's upstairs with the lights on over into the middle lane. Actually, who's playing Wisp? Quickly, FNG. Over in the middle lane, it'll be DK Phobos on the Venomancer. We've been seeing quite a bit of the Venomancer just popping up uh, in the mid lane. It's not like a mid dominating hero. He just. He survives the lane, right? He gets enough. He'll probably go mech into Yule Scepter. That's uh, what we've been seeing from the Venomancers that uh, we have seen. We've got Mag on the offlane Centaur, along with Little starting there on the Skywrath Mage. And now some contention here for this top rune. It's going to be Clockwork that wants to go for this. And that's going to be Pasha here for Vega. Is he going to throw the cogs down? He will move them, but the bounty rune is still going to go over to the Wisp. Taking some mana away from the Slark, but not too big of a deal. Oh, he almost got bounced up on the cliff. That would have been hilarious, but also terrible uh, for the side of VP Polar. He would have had enough to buy a TP, but it could have been difficult to maybe uh, get the Oculopus. Oc How do you even supposed to say that? Oculopus. Oculopus. There you go. Uh, anyways, Pasha on the clockwork middle lane. We're going to see... The Queen of Pain is going to be played by no one here. So really excited uh, about what this Queen of Pain can do as she is looking pretty good. Better than normal. The Rings of Royal Ascension. Those things are pretty sick. Over here in the jungle. They're jungling the Bloodseeker. All right. We're going to go for the Bloodthirst. I guess with that new ability. Uh, or Blood Rage. I guess a little bit better than Thirst. We'll probably see him just go one zero one, one And that means ultimate sustain in the jungle for the Bloodseeker. Seems maybe greedy. I guess if you catch someone off guard in a draft like this, Polar might not have been expecting that, but it'll be Undershock on the Witch Doctor, supporting in the bottom lane. And finally, it's taken us a while to get through these introductions, but it's going to be Seema the Slayer uh, playing on the Viper in the bottom lane by himself. Probably see him go for that mechanism. I'm actually kind of curious as to what the Queen of Pain will want to build into, if we'll just see that standard sort of uh, Null Tally bottle tread into Orchid. I wouldn't really expect to see much else. If the game gets tough, might go for the BKB. Uh, Mag here, not a surprise on one of his favorite heroes, doing very, very well on the Centaur. He's 7-0. and zero. Little uh, running into some trouble right now. This is actually very, very low, and I don't think Seema is going to be too scared off here by the Centaur. And actually, Centaur is maybe going to be the one that has to run away from this. They're slowing him down, but the creep wave coming in. Little's... Healed up to full HP as he throws that Arcane Bolt from the tree line. He did have that salve. We'll see how no one is doing in mid. He's 5 and 6, so a ton of denies. Phobos, though, finding some early farm. Looks like he'll go out for the quick Aquila. And uh, if he does decide to build that mechanism, we saw it yesterday. We know that this Venomancer, if he goes mech, probably not going to pick up Poison Nova until levels 10 and 11, as that is a hefty chunk of mana starting at 200. Mech, of course, costs 225 to use. You can't have both. I guess unless you go mana boots, but so far I haven't seen that come out for the Venomancer. Wisp level 2 right now, trying to do what he can, and this leaves Clockwork in a lane where actually, I feel like Clockwork does pretty well here. Yeah, he's going to even chase this down, and if he blocks the pounce, like, this should be a kill for Pasha. He can't get over the tree line! Pasha brings him down, and it's the first blood for the Clockwork, man. Making those gears churn. Finding that early kill. That's what I like to see. I know, uh, I think, was it yesterday or maybe the last time I was on Star Ladder? I know I took a bit of a break from Dota 2 as I was casting some CSGO uh, through the last week, but we saw a clockwork just like, it was a, installed a can opener instead of a hook because he opened up a can of whoop ass on a game and just spiraled out of control. I can't quite remember who it was. Mag contesting the pools here. You know, everyone hates mud golems, mag included. He's going to try to get uh, some damage onto those. But maybe this backfires. He does now have a point in double edge. He goes 1-1-1. One, one, one. Pretty standard stuff for the centaurs. See with the Slayer, how's he doing in this lane? 13-1. and one. Mag is 14-0. and oh. So even being a melee hero, still being able to get quite a bit. Now they're trying to get some revenge here on Pasha. Feeling a little pressured that this, uh, this Clockwork got a 1v2 kill. Something Clockwork is definitely known for, especially after the buff to Battery Assault. Oh, and yeah, we don't get there quite in time. Well, maybe just in time, but we see the Venomancer uh, will take a fall. There's a rotation over here out of the jungle from Arzak. He comes with the Blood Rite, and it was used. So that's uh, pretty nice. 
Is there alt text? Okay, 2.6 second delay on the blood, and it's a 0.4 second cast time. The more you know. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Random, random, cool. 29, 26, 23, and 20. Like, someone just put numbers in a hat. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I was, uh, that's actually a pretty big kill. They get back on the board up there. The Skywrath rotates over. Uh, he leaves the bottom lane, and now you've got this tri lane. That'll catch the clockwork off guard. He was feeling pretty warm and cozy up there. Uh, now they push him out of the comfort zone and find that kill. Uh, but we'll go back to the bottom lane and back to looking at the minimap. Don't worry. Seam of the Slayer. A thousand gold. Probably also going to look for that Aquila. Okay, maybe we're not looking at the minimap. Middle lane. It's another rotation out from the Bloodseeker. And he goes for the wards. He brings himself wards. So not only is this Bloodseeker jungling, he's finding these fantastic rotations, and he's also supporting up the team. So, I mean, I, I criticize it as saying maybe it's a little greedy, but if he's using that farm in the jungle to turn it into wards, I mean, that's good. You can't really call that greedy. You could argue that maybe that backfires because you're giving farm to someone and they're just buying support items. But look at that. Already putting a very, very nice ward here as they want to continue to get aggressive. Maybe he'll even buy up a smoke. We can see some rotations this way as drawing in the broadcaster slot still a little ghetto. Or Venom up here on the Slark. Looks like the people want to get on and controlling these runes are going to be up at about 10 seconds. Slark is left alone. Clockwork realizes this. Clockwork is uh, almost level 6. Queen of Pain's coming to the top lane even. They want to try to bring down the Slark. Here's the smoke going out. The mid lane abandoned. Little's going to be finding some experience. The Wisp is back just in time. Now the overcharge coming out. Let's see what Queen of Pain can do. I don't know if they realize that Wisp is here. Clockwork, I think they were waiting on level 6. He does not quite have it yet. Maybe with this creep wave. Oh, that Queen of Pain going to jump in. The Shadow Strike will go out. It's going to connect. The Overcharge is here, but FNG is going to die so fast. They've got teleports coming in, but Pasha, I think, can buy some space. Oh, he throws down the cogs. That's going to put Mag inside of it, though. Slark will fall to the Queen of Pain on the back lines, but Mag coming up. Vega can easily get out of this one, I think, as, as a team. That Scream of Pain is going to miss. Cycle some tower aggro, saving just enough mana to be able to blink away. And he better do that very soon, because Little's coming in. He's got two points in the Ancient Seal, so the silence is ready. Oh, no one feeling a little too confident up here. You better blink fast. Actually, no one else closed the distance. And now maybe Little's the one in trouble. Scream of Pain, one more attack will do it, and the blink away. The Stampede, though, they're closing in quick. The hook from Pasha, he's already back alive. He's going to bring down the Venomancer, and now Vega, can he get the kill on Mag? He does, he will fall, but he picks up the double kill. Now have been used, Wisp back on the lines, but Arzak is here. He throws down the Rupture, Illidan trying to retreat. Heads up, the Witch Doctor's back into the fray. Witch Doctor actually is rather good against uh, Wisp plus anyone combo, because they're staying close for the tether, and then like... You just have the cask keep bouncing back and forth. So well done there by uh, FNG to move back. And uh, something else I should talk about. I'm surprised I didn't already. Uh, but we'll get there. We'll get to the point. The point being, Bloodseeker is is pretty much thought of as a counter to... The, oh my god, Queen of Pain is just killing everybody in the mid lane. She's going to be silenced up a little bit. You know she's going back in on this. Okay, maybe not. She's pretty low. She wants one more attack. She'll blink forward and she'll get it. And bottling up, she will fall. But doesn't give away much. Free trip back to base, maybe losing a little bit of gold. They have been unloading, though, on this Venomancer. He is not having a fun time. He is 0 and 4, and honestly, lucky for him, we've missed most of his deaths. Try to fix that. But anyways, back to the point of Bloodseeker. Uh, the ability right here, Thirst. That is something that will, I think the only thing in the game that will allow you to see Slark through the Shadow Dance. And generally thought of as a counter. You can get around it by just building Tranquils up on Slark so that... You know, if he can't see you, you're in Shadow Dance. You're not regening because that's disabling your passive since you're seen by the enemy team. Uh, but if you have Tranquil Boots, you'll still regen. You'll get to the point where he doesn't see you anymore. And holy shit, he dies again. He dies again. How can I keep up with this? Clockwork must have went down as well. No, he just probably, yeah, he just TP'd out. He got the kill and he TP'd out. Things are going terribly wrong for Virtus Pro Polar. Vega looking really, really good. Uh, I already went over their last two meetings. It was you know, moderately quick 2-0 for Virtus Pro Polar and a best of three. But right now, Vega 
This is a this is big. I don't think Vega has any chance of, of staying in the standings, even if they win here. Also, Clockwork pretty good against Slark because that battery assault will get you. And you can see there how he was low. We saw him through that Shadow Dance. And quickly, I wanted to check out the Star Ladder standings. Where is Vega in those? Vega is down there at six and oh, seven and six. So I don't think there's really any chance that Vega's going to get into the top four, but they could definitely stop Virtus Pro from getting there easily. Virtus Pro Polar is at six and two. So with those two losses, I'm not sure the strength of their remaining schedule, but it's definitely a realistic uh, thing that they could get into the top four of this round robin and qualify. Mag down here in the bottom lane. Tranquil's in 1,100 golds. Uh oh, little. You know which one's real here. Can't ca oh! oh, Vega ringing the Roshan's doorbell and presses it so hard it even kills the Skywrath Mage who's in the vicinity. Tread's coming out here for the Bloodseeker. That's another kill for this Queen of Pain. 8, 2, and 1. Really showing the potential of this hero. I know some people I, th I think I saw talking about it saying maybe it was even a little too much. Slark could be in some trouble up here in the top lane. He'll throw the hook out onto FNG. It turns out it's FNG who is in trouble. And Vega catching people off guard, just picking all the heroes that get buffed here. And it's going to be a rupture that will come in and bring down that Slark. I mean, you see him through Shadow Dance, you pop up the rupture. The hero is not doing anything, and it's two more kills onto the board. It's a 10 kill advantage for Vega. Let's switch over to Net Worth as we, as we have passed the 10 minute mark, and we'll see the Queen of Pain, no surprises, up top. Just 8, 2, and 1 again to re reiterate that. 6,000 gold is her net worth. Seam of the Slayer, no surprise, is going for the Aquila into the mechanism. So he's at 5.1k. This uh, clockwork, even that offlaner at 4.4. So that 1, 2, 3 core roll position dominating the net worth chart. Bottom lane, though, Seam of the Slayer is in a lot of trouble. They'll have a rotation down. They use the stampede. Four of them going to get involved, and it takes them a while to kill. As, uh, that was only one point in Corrosive Skin, too. He got pretty aggressive, maxing out the Nether Toxin, and now Phobos going to try to TP out of this. Cooldown is still pretty long on Sonic Wave. 135 seconds, so just a little over two minutes. If he had it available, you can clearly see how easy it is for him to just kill this Venomancer. And with the Skywrath Silence, the Poison Nova, the Stun of the Centaur, the Pounce, everything, it looks like he's going to opt to go for a very, very quick BKB purchase. Look at... Oh, my... He got... I, it looks like maybe the rocket even missed, but one more bounce as he was TPing out would have been the kill here on Little. That's Clockwork again getting aggressive. Didn't even use the hook to start things off. And it looks like Clockwork will be moving towards a blade mail. Witch Doctor going to go towards an Ags as Queen of Pain will bottle up the regen. And Viper with that max nether toxin is actually pretty dangerous uh, in, in terms of how strong his push can be. They got the Aquila, the mech. And I, I think the Nether Toxin Max is, is saying that they just want to push towers with it. We'll limit his potential a little bit in team fights, as I think the Corrosive Skin to survive is a bit better. But look at them, just giving this farm to Undershock. That's how much space the cores have created. Queen of Pain, looking like the Queen of Pain of old, just opening up this game. Clockwork as well, and Phobos walks up the hill into this, and... Can't be feeling good there. They'll pop that mechanism. The Poison Nova is going to be rather annoying, but there's not much follow-up here. Maybe Slark, but they throw down the Blood right, And Illidan taking quite a bit of damage. It looks like no one is going to fall here. Seems the Slayer now caught pretty much by himself. Pasha, look at this. Throwing the hook over. Hooks to an ally, but at least he'll get into the fray. Oh, misses the cogs as well. So Pasha making a few mistakes. Uh, he will bring down the Slark, and now can he get out to bring down FNG? Looks like he'll back off. They don't quite know where mag is they do know where fng is i mean they see him let's go to their vision um okay i don't quite know how that works with the vision oh there's only one point in thirst Mega oh my god he gets it he gets it i don't know what that means but that's probably some trash talk right there the blade mail completed off of that kill there's some more synergy that we uh, we discover as time moves on. Bloodseeker and Clockwork lining up those hooks, lining up those rockets. Easy snipes. 
All right, so 6.7 on the Queen of Pain, 5.8 on the Viper, 5.8 on the Clockwork. Clockwork's finished the Blade Mill, Viper's got the mech, another 700 gold. Queen of Pain is moving quickly out towards that BKB, has it in about 200 gold. I'm going to be a little careful to not blow through those big uh, duration charges, like the 10, 9, 8, 7. You're getting a little low, and actually no one is in some trouble, but Mag is going to be hooked up here by Pasha. And now Queen of Pain going to go back in, no problem. We'll even throw out the alt just so there's no time for anyone else on the side of Polar to come in and try to get him out of that situation. Or if he maybe even threw out the Stampede. So nicely done. Clockwork right back to farming. He picked up the haste. That helped facilitate that kill. And now they're in danger of this Bloodseeker even overtaking. Bloodseeker just overtook Mag on the Centaur. Alright, that's neck and neck. But that just goes to show you that this sort of four-roll Bloodseeker and that blood rage out onto the Viper. That's some terrifying stuff. They go, is this their patch, or are they just catching people off guard with some new picks in 6.83? I guess only time will really tell for the answer to that question, but so far, looking pretty solid. FNG doing what great wisps do, staying behind his core. If anything happens, he'll get him out of trouble with a relocate, sacrifice himself. But meanwhile, Pasha going to find another kill there in the middle lane. He'll hook over and survive. That brings down DK Phobos. That's going to be the Venomancer's, what, seventh death? And now Mag is going to have a bit of a disconnect right now. Eleven 1 hundred gold here on the Bloodseeker. Poor man shield. Treads. Sage's mask. Whatever he's going to turn that into. I mean, they don't need a bass, but maybe they already have the Aquila on the Viper. Maybe the Medallion. Yeah, he could actually go for Medallion. I could see that being pretty solid. Uh, also earn. But Medallion with the new armor. I mean, why not? You've already picked these heroes that have all been adjusted in 6.83. You might as well pick up the items that have been as well, right? Twenty-two seven. We'll take a look at the graphs. It's about 8,000, maybe even a little bit more than that gold advantage or net worth advantage. And 7.5k experience at 15 minutes, all very sizable. It's about 500 gold a minute in their favor. We can look at the items at large. No one just finished up that BKB. The Blade Mail, the Mac. We've talked enough about those. Undershock is already more than halfway to the Aghanim Scepter for the Witch Doctor. And Arzek probably going Urn or Medallion uh, with that Sage's Mask. FNG on the Wisp trying to work towards that mechanism. Illidan is gone for the Midas and looks for a quick BKB thereafter. Mag has the Blink Dagger and the Tranquils, as almost every centaur would. Phobos has nothing, because he's died seven times. He's been involved in four kills, though. Only 60 CS at 15 minutes is not really where he wants to be. And like I said, DK Phobos playing the Venomancer. Venom's a hero that kind of just goes to the mid lane and survives, but... Not against Queen of Pain's damage. He has died a lot. And Little, level 7... Trying to finish some treads just to tank up. I mean, this guy's a liability at this point. He's got no armor. So imagine if it is a medallion for the Bloodseeker. You've got no chance. Queen of Pain will blow you up. No problem. Queen of Pain is... I was going to say you get the highest level in the game, but it's actually Pasha that has found kill after kill. He's up to level 12. He started in that 1v2 lane and got the... I believe it was First Blood. Uh, killing the Slark 1v1 as the supports weren't quite there. 11 and 11 here for the Queen of Pain and for the Slark. Level 10 on uh, Sima, the Slayer's Viper. So we know Viper Strike Rank 2 coming out pretty soon. Also going to be pretty dangerous. Rupture Rank 2 coming out in two more levels for Arzex Bloodseeker. Things are going to get dicey, man. If they haven't already. Trying to do what they can to push, but we look at a lineup like Polar. They don't really have that much push, or at least very, very quickly. If, you know, they got Siege potential for the push with these Plague Words, which are maxed. 
But other than that, they don't really have any, and I don't, I don't think they're crossing the river for a long time. They're going to have to defend, maybe smoke and find a pickoff, try to get themselves back into this game. But otherwise, I don't think they're doing much at all. Seam of the Slayer going to stick around with us. Now they're toxing the blood right here to quickly bring down those creeps. That is 100 mana cost, and they don't want to lose any towers. Witch Doctor again down here. He's been down here by himself. I think they realize that. Actually, no, he just TP'd. But he has been in this lane a lot by himself. That's why he's got so much farm towards that Aghanim Scepter. Uh, well, Witch Doctor goes down. It's okay. He loses a little bit of the gold, I think, that comes in. I mean, I guess that would be reliable. So he, he lost all his unreliable gold. He still has 200 because of the tower gold that just came in. And, uh, yeah, he's getting pretty close to that Ags. The tier 2 goes down, so that's more map control here for Vega. We'll take a look at their vision. We see they drop down some aggressive wards. One over here as well uh, on that cliff. A little further back. We saw this one uh, very, very early on, but that's obviously went away. Those were the wards that the Bloodseeker purchased up. We'll look at the Dire Vision. They've got one out aggressively. They'll see the Clockwork, and that with that ward, that's going to find the kill on Pasha, who, like I said, is the highest level in the game. He'll pull someone into the cogs, and oh my gosh, he uses the hook. He actually survives. He lives on about 50 HP. Now, Wisp trying to do something, trying to get the spirits. That's big levels for Wisp. Level 9 off of that kill. We'll go back with the tether out onto Illidan, and let's go to full vision. We've got uh, Bloodseeker messing around up in the top lane, maybe wanting to kill. Oh, they're both going to go for the TPs, and they'll get out in time. Sheepstick maybe the next item here for Queen of Pain. Wants to be even cheaper about it, could go for Yules. I guess, actually, Bloodseeker could go for it as well. Maybe it could also be what that Sage's Mask is for. More move speed, ability to cancel TPs. So it could be the Yules. But like I said, I wouldn't mind seeing the Medallion. Wondershock's like, alright, well, a couple of my core heroes went down. Oh, I'll just keep farming. So Slark's disrupted the Tricor, just dominated this net worth chart. He's up at the second of the game overall. Still first for his team, of course. And not that far behind the Queen of Pain. Four Staff now coming out for this Clockwork and give him some more survivability as he's been initiating all day with these hooks. He's 9-3-3. Three, and three. If he finds any more good initiations. And yeah, we got that Aghanim Scepter now only about 1,400 gold away. Blood right. Is that enough to clear a whole creep wave? Not quite. Actually, I don't think anyone gets any last hits from that, but other way, either way, creep wave still going to be pushing out. The tier 2 tower did fall, and we'll see when they want to group up, and actually, they'll just go for the smoke. They want to turn this smoke. Anytime you smoke, you want to use it to, to bring down an objective. Like, hero kills are great, but that's not really a worthy objective. If you can get a hero kill and transition it into either taking Roche or taking a tower, then you can call your smoke a fantastic success. If you happen to win, like, a crazy 5 for nail team fight, I feel like we can count that as an objective. That gets you back in the game for sure. Uh, we actually see Skywrath Mage goes down to the Clockwork, using the hook for that. Ag's most likely going to be his next item. And they've got themselves into a pretty aggressive position with that smoke. There are no wards here. They're going to go straight onto Phobos. Doesn't even know it, but he hits the Centaur and disables the Blink. No one making some sick plays and some very good reactions right there. Now, here goes the Stampede. Undershot going to throw out his ultimate, but Slark jumps right onto him. Vega still trying to bring down Phobos, but can't quite do it, and things are going pretty wrong here for Vega. It is still space created because of the bottom lane. We've got this Viper and this Bloodseeker. Green and red for the Christmas season right now, pushing down the bottom tier too, but they're going to find FNG. He's got some targets. Yeah, he'll go ahead and get himself out of those cogs. No problem now. Pasha on the clockwork. Gonna have to throw out the blade mail and try to survive. The tower did go down in the bottom lane. He'll hook away to some... No, he hooks away to the Viper now. Viper is involved in this team fight. There's a rupture and a pounce. Illidan can't quite get out of this one. FNG will, but no hope for the little Slark. Shadow Dance, not gonna save you here and was already used at the start of the fight. So they find the Slark. Things didn't start off incredibly well, but I think they might end well. That's... Big damage coming in from Arzak with that blood right. Brings a little down to almost nothing. Doesn't quite kill him. And now Bloodseeker trying to escape, but Phobos, is he finally on the board? He is. 170 and 4. Now he drops the Poison Nova. Undershot coming back into this fight after respawning. Walking his way up towards it. Might fall again. Did get a Maledict. That is only one point in there. Trying to get up to that Bounty Rune. Won't find it. Centaur going to go ahead and steal it, and he goes down. So further delaying that Aghanim Scepter. So that's a, a bright spot for Polar, but that team fight, even that wasn't exceptionally even. They lost the tower and the bottom lane.
Slark holds on to his second position. Viper's actually our new net worth leader. He's probably working towards his eggs. Yeah, he's actually already finished it. Slark's got a BKB Midas. BKB now at a nine second charge. Same thing goes for the Queen of Pain. Use that BKB to try to get that kill quickly on the Venomancer. Didn't really work out. And Clockwork. We already see Clockwork with the point booster, so we know he's going for the Ags. The hooks have been deadly enough, coming every 55 seconds. And he's looking for another one here. He'll find it. Out onto Phobos. Who else? Who else? Oh, no. And Illidan actually on the other side of the cogs. Will be BKB up. The mech goes out, I think. Was that the mech finished? Yeah, the mech tether. He got so much HP just going right back to him. But now that runs out. Arzek is here. They don't quite have vision yet. And Arzek will go down to no thirst potential. Illidan stuck up onto this pounce. And going to be hit by the cogs. Pasha will find the kill. And on the other side of things, Undershock. Bringing down a little. Mag going to have to stampede to get out of dodge. Four heroes dead for the side of Polar. Slark with buyback. Venna with buyback. Venna's level 11 with... Poison Nova 2, but use it. It's on cooldown. Not much left to defend this. Didn't have the time uh, to be alive and put down the Wall of Wards sort of in this area. So this push is not going to be too difficult here. And again, that Aghanim Scepter, the increased range, the 12 second cooldown <coughs> of the Viper Strike. Going to be the 12 second cooldown of the Hook Shot relatively soon. And the 2 3 Tower is going down. There's a Blink Dagger here and possibility of a four man stop. Just spaced enough, it looks like, on the side of Vega. Tier 3 tower will fall, and Vega going to regain that net worth chart dominance. All three of their core heroes. One, two, and three. Slark is close. Venomancer's rebound a little bit, even being one and eight. Looking for the BKB next. So no aggression. Can't get out to the... Uh, really like to see the... If I could think. The Aghanim Scepter Veil of Discord on the Veno. Like, that'll win a team fight by itself. And now Vega with their map control. They've taken out all the dire tier 2s. They've really got no chance at contesting this Roshan. So Vega move in. And they will bring it down. It's about half HP right now. And while Vega are looking good in this game is maybe even in the bag for them. Unfortunately, they've got really no chance of making it into the, the round robin stage. Or the top four of the round robin standings those again to reiterate they're seven and six teams in the top four have three four two and three losses there's no potential uh for lions to get up to six losses and uh, there might be enough games for empire pr and navi to get to six losses so maybe just maybe but they don't control their own fate and if they lose this game if uh, VP Polar makes the comeback, then there's absolutely no chance. But let's check. Who does, uh, who are we even watching now? <laughs> I'm actually the best. Uh, Polar. So let's check out the strength of their schedule coming up. They still have to play Secret. That's actually the next game today. They still have to play Na'Vi. So there's two teams eyed for the top four that have to play each other. So VP Polar versus Na'Vi, whenever that happens, should be big. Uh, Paul are going to have to play their sister team, Fearless Pro proper. They've still got to play Empire, so those are also two teams uh, vying for the top four. Uh, they've got to play Anchors. They've got to play My Insanity. That one maybe shouldn't be too hard for Polar. And they're playing Vega right now, which she asked me yesterday. I would have said also shouldn't have been too hard for Polar, but Vega are, uh, are dominating. I don't think there's any other way to put it already. It stagnated a little bit, and of course some of those flat lines are due to pauses, but... It's been a pretty large portion of dominance this game. Already up to 12,000 gold, 10,000 gold, excuse me, and about 7,500 net worth in favor of Vega, 27 to 14. Little more than a 3 to 2 ratio in kills. Almost, yeah, I, guess, I mean, we're one away, right? So I think it's better to say a little less than a 2 to 1 ratio. We'll leave it at that. <sighs> let's see the next game like i mentioned coming up it's going to be virtus pro polar versus secret and it's in 34 minutes so i think we'll we'll get there on time and then polar versus the anchors uh that's coming up at 1845 cet 1245 pm 
Eastern. Pull are finishing most of their schedule today. The one game that they won't be playing uh, is against, or the two games rather, Virtus Pro and Navi that they have left to face. Um, they're working on it. Mag's having some trouble. This is the second time he's disconnected this game. Items. What did Bloodseeker ever turn that? Seed? Okay, he did go for the Yules. Uh, I don't know. That's kind of what I thought. I didn't really want to say it because I really wanted it to be Medallion. I know I did touch on it. Uh, it'll be the Yules and just another ability to cancel TPs, right? Like, we see that a lot. The move speed's nice. The mana regen is even pretty nice that you're spamming blood right these days. Uh, and obviously, canceling TPs. Nothing's better than that. Actually securing the kills. Undershock still works towards the Ags. Vega's going for Ags as well. And we, we look at the previous patches. Like, if you wanted to use your ult and have it be, like, super effective. You kind of wanted to get the Ag so there was more damage, lower cooldown as the cooldown for an ultimate that was not, like, really that great. But now that it goes through spell immunity, going an item like BKB first, I guess that's rather defensive. I, I think it's a good call this game. You never feel fantastic about having to go BKB first. Uh, I guess the Orchid is still that really aggressive choice, but now just getting the strength up from the BKB, the stats that come from the Aghanim Scepter, the fact that it's going to do more damage and be on a 45 second cooldown with Ags and Pierce spell immunity. That's pretty insane. Like, Slark's got a BKB, but now we've got the Queen of Pain's ult that goes through that, as well as the Rupture that goes through it. Witch Doctor's ult goes through it as well, because that's all physical damage. <laughs> like, you're screwed, Illidan. Why did you even go BKB? Because Hookshot will stun you, and Viper Strike goes through that. Literally every single person's ultimate goes through your BKB. I don't know if there's any other better choice. Like, try to get to a Scotty or something quick. But it's it's going to be a really tough game. I feel like Polar are completely countered. Like, Slark is shut down. Obviously, the Venomancer has been shut down. Little has done nothing. He's got a, a few kills, netted them nicely with the silence. Mag is trying his darndest on the Centaur Warrunner to get anything done with the Blink and the Forest Staff, and FNG is just desperately trying to keep people alive with all this damage that's coming out and going through Magic Immunity. It's been rough stuff. The only way to really put it. Yeah, Skywrath, even the lowest net worth in the game at 2.5. Even the Wisp is at level 11 and about, what was it, 4.6k gold? Uh, level 9 on the Skywrath, so lowest level by 2. Our highest levels are going to be Clockwork and Slark at both 15 apiece. Queen of Pain at 14, a Viper at 13, Centaur at 12, a group of 11s, and then that Skywrath at 9. Net worth relatively the same. It's Slark, he gets into the ranks of the Vega players, and then he'll get killed, and he'll drop down, down a little. He'll go back to farming, he'll move back up. He has not hit number 1, I don't think. Maybe there was a small chance where he did. Apparently whatever they said was very funny. As Vlot is laughing at it. Hopefully we can get this show on the road.
Oh, pauses, man. I think we're just gonna we're gonna play the quiet game. Let's uh I'm gonna play it in Twitch chat. Let's see how quiet you oh, never mind. No time for the quiet game. As we're gonna be resuming. So we talked a lot about how I feel like Veard is pro and their lineup is completely countered. I forgot that was going on. Roshan gonna fall as well. Not able to be contested. And that's gonna be the Aegis of the Immortal over to Seam of the Slayer. So you just put this guy on the front line. Like he's your your pushing right now, right? You put him on the front line, he starts hitting some towers with Nether Toxin, and speaking of towers, there's not even one to hit in mid anymore. Unless we look back and count the tier fours. But the racks are exposed here in mid. Even the range barracks taking a little bit of damage. So Vega might look to smoke up, find pickoffs, and trying to end the game cleanly. Mag connected again. Going to try to do everything in his power to keep his team in this. But it's going to be a lot of work. Illidan is going to get one tower, but the TP was coming in. This one's going to be the clockwork. The blood right is going to be a little off the mark here, and Illidan does not get low enough to put in that passive. And they're going to turn this around. Vega feeling maybe a little overconfident. Like, yeah, we're winning. We can stand anywhere we want on the map. It's still not quite the case. There are the potential for the relocate ganks, of which I don't think we've seen any. We've seen a couple relocates to try to uh, to save people, and even those haven't quite worked out. The Viper Strike for Steam of the Slayer, I don't know if this is the right call. He's hoping his teammate, yeah, here's the buyback. So they're going to try to fight off the second life of the Viper. Ultimate goes out, will be brought down. Oh, Death Ward will attack the Wisp, but now they know where the Wisp is. FNG going to go off and uh, try to join up with the other supports. He'll tether out, and that was that was really big. That was good for Polar. They forced a buyback. They got some kills. Slark netted one of them, I believe, at least. He's 8, 6, and 4 right now. He's number one on net worth at 11.8. They brought the Aegis down of Seema the Slayer. So things going right here for the Polar team, and they forced a buyback, but... Let's keep in mind this Bloodseeker, if anyone is just joining, this hero was just run as, as a four roll. He was even buying some wards uh, so that the pick wasn't all that greedy, and he's got himself to a Yule Scepter. So the buyback, you know, it doesn't delay him too much. Like, what items do you want on your Bloodseeker? If, if he could do something crazy, maybe he gets a Heaven's Halberd next. Uh, but really, he's got level 11 Rupture. That's all you want. He's pretty much online. I don't think the buyback sets them back. Uh, too much. If it was maybe another hero, it would have. I don't think there were any others. No, it was it was just Arzak on the Bloodseeker. So Polar using their experience to uh, stay in this game. Not going to give up. They find that tower. Some great pickoffs. Viper looking, looking for a BKB, though. That's going to be pretty dangerous. The Axe is done on Witch Doctor, so if they can start a fight on their terms, I think Vega surely are going to take that one. It's going to be up to Illidan, I think, to bring down uh, the Witch Doctor pretty quickly. Either just through right clicks. They don't have a lot of stuns. And Phobos will go down. He dies in the base. I think it's the Shadow Poison that actually kills him in the end since he gets back home. And that means this tier 2 tower is falling. The middle lane, though, is pushing out. So it won't be too easy for Vega uh, to get that middle lane of Rax. Unless they want to put creeps in the base and then just go towards the buildings. There is actually no glyph of fortification right now for VP Polar as Mag is... Posted up nicely in the trees, hoping that his team was going to try to fight there at the tier 2. But with uh, Venomancer going down and getting jumped like that, I don't think they wanted to. Basha in some control. In some control? What am I saying? In some trouble. Not in control. But maybe in control. I don't know. The pounce is coming. We got three quarters duration on what is a six second silence. So... 1.5 seconds has ticked off the clock. Another four and a half seconds of silence to go, so I don't think he's getting off the power cogs in time. He does have a four staff, though, so quick reactions. He'll see the pounce jump. He'll force himself this way. He probably will dodge this. I think he's going to be fine. If I had to bet rares right now on if this guy survives, I say he does. And even <laughs> if they continue chasing him, the rest of the team's like, yeah, sure. Like, actually, Clockwork, why don't you just go and die? Because that would be even better. If you buy that space, commit three heroes for that kill, and then up top, we're going to get this tower down. It's already at half-life. I already pointed out there's no glyph 
But unfortunately, we're going to have ourselves another pause. Wisp also working towards a BKB. Uh, actually, BKB or Halberd, right? I mean, I've already, I feel like I've covered why I think BKB is not good. I guess there's still a lot of magic damage to, to dodge. But I feel like if you're just trying to mitigate some magic damage, you have someone build a pipe, and then you don't waste money on BKBs that I would say are useless. I suppose it, it does allow you to at least TP out BKB TP, but even then, like if Scream of Pain or whatever the alt's called, something roar, Sonic Wave, something roar, clearly I'm thinking of Beastmaster. I am wearing a Beastmaster shirt, so maybe that's why. But yeah, Sonic Wave, and scream of pain. Like if Sonic Wave is online, you're not TPing out with a BKB. It will eliminate the, I guess, the Yule's cancel. And all right, Pasha. Yeah, like I said, he's gonna force staff. The pounce is gonna miss regardless. Pasha brings everyone back to his team, and now the hook out onto the wisp, looking for the pickoffs outside the base. Illidan is in trouble. Is it gonna get low enough that they can? Okay, yeah, starting to attack him now. The ultimate goes out. That's not gonna disengage. He still has rupture on him, taking that pure damage. The right click coming in. And looks like he'll die from the Maledict as he retreats out. Yes, he will. He does have buyback available. Now the blood right going on. Going to baptize that Venomancer in blood as he tries to baptize everyone in poison. But it's not going to be enough. That's going to be the GG. And we wait a little bit for the for the GG call with those pauses. But Vega playing exceptionally well and trying to bust Polar's chances of qualifying for the LAN event. Star Ladder 11. Shout out to somebody. This is Vega. I don't know who that is. Maybe someone on Hellraisers, perhaps. That doesn't ring a bell, though. That's Doom. Do is it Dumas? Something like that. Uh, either way, this is Star Ladder, guys. Next game was coming up, I believe, at 11:30. So it's going to be about 21 minutes before we will get to see Virtus Pro Polar play again. Uh, as unfortunately for them, they take the loss here to Vega, but Vega looking fantastic as uh, definitely a new team. I know they were just, I guess they were kind of pub stars. They were Euro pub for a while. Uh, they formulated their roster, managed to, I guess, pick up a sponsor in Vega Squadron, and they are looking really good here in 6.83. That might not work again, just because, you know, maybe they catch people off guard picking up three heroes that were, I would say, pretty dramatically buffed in 6.83. Uh, and also just Bloodseeker, who you don't see a lot, and is new to Captain's mode in general. Uh, but it's going to be Virtus Pro Polar versus Secret. And that's a very big game uh, for pole position in the top four. Uh, Secret is, what, 10 and 3 right now? Maybe 11 and 3? I think this could be Secret's last game uh, in these round robin group stages. But, anyways, Star Ladder, make sure to support it. You can buy the tickets. Uh, you can follow them on Twitter. You can also follow me on the Summit. Shout out to them for having me on. But, of course, I'm Helium. You can follow me on Twitter at Heliumbrella right there. Let me know how you think I'm doing. You can also uh, retweet me, as you'll see. I'm doing a bit of a giveaway for reach a thousand followers, which we're pretty close. So get a get an extra Christmas present in there by just clicking something on Twitter. And anyways, we'll be back. <laughs> 